Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So you may remember from my previous videos that I really love the Pow Kitty A13. This is a little tabletop arcade system, and one of my favorite things about it is that you can make all sorts of modifications to it. So for example, I made a bunch of physical modifications to it in a previous video, but in this video I'm going to show you how to change the firmware so you can run the most recent version of RetroArch directly on your machine. And there's a dedicated team called Team Ruka who've been working on this custom firmware. And I've been using it for a couple weeks now and I really like it. Now personally I really enjoy using RetroArch so I like having the ability to use both RetroArch and this fun little system. Now there are a couple caveats I want to go over before we get started. Number one, there is no HDMI out with this custom firmware. They're working on it but it's not enabled yet. Secondly, you cannot adjust the brightness. It's set at 100% and they haven't figured out how to turn it down yet. And finally, although you'll be able to add new cores to this, it's not going to play anything that's above the PS1, so no Dreamcast, no Nintendo 64. They're working on it, but it's not ready yet. So let's jump into it. Now to actually get your hands on this firmware, you have to actually join the team's Telegram channel. And if you've never used it before, Telegram is a secure messaging app. And I'll leave a link to their Telegram channel in the written guide, which you will find linked below. So before we get into the firmware part, let's prep your SD card. The first thing you need to do is you need to format it for Win32. And if the card is larger than 32 gigs, you're going to have to use a program called GUI Format. And I'll leave a link to this in my written guide as well. So it's super simple, all you do is format your SD card. Now after you've gone to Telegram and downloaded the new firmware, just go ahead and unzip it and put it wherever you want it to go. And this is what it'll look like. You'll have a bunch of different folders here. The first thing you want to do is you want to take the SD card folder and you want to move all of those contents over to your recently formatted SD card. And this is where you're going to put all your ROMs as well as your emulators. Okay, so once it's all moved over, go ahead and take a look and you can see in the ROMs folder it's empty. So we'll show you how to do that. But first I want to show you how to update the emulators or the RetroArch cores within the system. So go into settings, then RetroArch, and then cores. And you'll see it already is preloaded with a bunch of cores, but you can see some of them are kind of old. Some are like a year or a year and a half old. So in my written guide, I'll leave a link that'll go to the RetroArch page where you can download the most recent version of these emulators. So all you really want to do is just go through this list, figure out which ones you want to update, and then download those zip files. And like I mentioned before, not all of these cores are going to work, so even if you do see a Nintendo 64 core in there, it's not going to work. Don't even worry about downloading it. Okay, so once you've downloaded all the new ones and you've put them wherever you want them to be, let's go ahead and unzip all of them. I'm just going to select all of them, and then I'm going to right click and do extract here. So that unzips all of them all at once, and then I can delete the zip files, and then I'm left with all of these SO files, which are core files. And I'm just going to drag these over to the SD card and replace the old ones. And I'm not doing every single RetroArch core that's already on the card, I'm just really picking and choosing the ones I know I'm going to use and the ones I want to have updated. Okay, so there you go, you have the freshest emulators available. Now one more piece of homework we need to do is we need to get an arcade dat file. And this file will basically take all of those weirdly named zip files from like MAME and Final Burn Neo and it'll translate it into correct game names. So I'll leave a link to this one as well. You just go in here, you find that download button, right click and then save as. And I'm just going to save it directly on my card in the RetroArch folder. Okay, so now our emulators are set up and we have our dat file. So now we're ready to move over our actual ROM files. Now this is really easy. All you have to do is just move over your folders and it doesn't matter what they're named. You can name them whatever you want. I'm not gonna move over every single game right here. I'm just gonna pick a few systems here so I can show off how this works. Okay, once everything's moved over, we are now ready to flash the firmware on the device itself. So let's go back to that unzipped firmware file. And in here, you're going to find another zip file called driver. All you want to do is now extract that into its own folder, and you can put it wherever you want as well. I'm just going to put it right in the same folder.
Okay, and now I have a folder called driver. And what we want to do here is we just want to run the executable here. And this is just going to install drivers on your PC that will allow you to recognize the A13 when you plug it into your computer. And I haven't mentioned it yet, but this firmware can only be flashed using a Windows computer. You can't do it with a Mac. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is plug the A13 into our PC. Now, unfortunately, you're going to need a special cable in order to do this. You need to have two USB male connectors. So you can see here it's male to male. Now, luckily at my house, I had just this random USB-C to USB-A converter here. So all I did is just plug the USB-C cable into it. And I'll leave links to these cables or a converter in my guide. So plug one of the ends into your PC. And then you want to plug the other one into the top port of your A13 USB ports. Make sure it's in the top one. Now bear in mind, your A13 should be off this entire time. Now we need to push a couple buttons in order to get this to boot correctly. Now what we want to do is we want to push every button except for start in this top section here. So basically the volume buttons, the menu button, and the select button. And you want to hold all of these down while you power the device on. It's kind of awkward to press all of them all at once. It kind of feels like you're playing Twister or something, but just push all four of those down and then turn the device on. And you'll know it's working because your PC will make the USB like connected sound. If you don't hear the sound, I recommend you reboot your machine because maybe the drivers need to have a restart in order to work. Okay, once you hear the sound, you can take your fingers off the device and then you're ready to run this batch file. So just double click on this one that says flash all versions. And then you need to press Y on your keyboard and enter in order to confirm the flash. And then just hit yes here. And there you go, just let it run. It's gonna take a moment and it'll ask you to confirm one more time. And it'll run through the process one more time. That's it, once you're done, you can just hit any key on your keyboard. And congratulations, you've now flashed custom firmware onto your device. So let's put that SD card into your A13 and turn it on and see how it looks. Now the first thing you want to do when you boot it up is you want to add playlist. You want to add your systems to the device. But for some reason the option is not there in the menu when you first boot it up. So we're going to enable it for you. Go over to settings and then go to user interface and then go to menu item visibility. And within here, you're going to see an option that says Show Import Content tab. Just turn that on. Okay, back out to the main menu. Go down to Configuration File, and then select Save Current Configuration. That's going to save the ability to see the Import Content menu. And then what I like to do is just quit RetroArch. So you just hit the Quit button, power off the device, and then power it back on. And now you see we have that little plus sign. So now we can import content. So go down and select manual scan. And then under content directory, you want to pick whatever ROM folder you want to use. So let's start with NES. And then just select scan this directory. And then for system name, just select the Nintendo Entertainment System. And finally, under default core, you want to pick whatever core you want to launch with. I only installed one NES core here, so I'm just going to use that one. And then you just go down and do start scan. And it takes like half a second to scan, it's super fast. And I've already scanned a couple before making this video, that's why you see the Game Boy Advance there. But if you go to the NES section, you can see all of your games are there. But one thing you might notice is all those USA within parentheses, and it's kind of ugly. So there's an easy way to get rid of those, and let me show you how to do that. So go back over to settings. And then go down near the bottom to Playlists. And then go down to the bottom again to Manage Playlists. Then select the NES section. And then select Label Display Mode. And within there, select the Remove Parentheses and Brackets section. That's it. Go back to your folder and you'll see all those USAs are gone. Pretty cool, right? So to boot up a game, you just go and hover over the game and then select it and then hit Run. And there you are, playing Dr. Mario. Now there are all sorts of configurations you can do. Let me just show you a couple things just to get you started. So first hit the menu button to get back to the RetroArch menu. Go back over to the settings tab, then go to video. And then under scaling, you can change your aspect ratio. And it'll already be set to a custom resolution. We'll mess with that later. Let me show you first just how to set an aspect ratio. And let's just select 4x3, which is the native resolution for NES. So go ahead and resume the game. And you can see now we have a 4x3 display. 
Now, if you wanted to make it a little wider to take advantage of the screen, you can go back over there and then change it to something else. So for example, we can do three by two, which is the aspect ratio of the RG351P. And there you go, so now it's a little bit wider. So you have a lot of options to play around with there, but that's how you set the aspect ratio. Okay, so let's scan an arcade folder because those are a little bit tricky. Let's do main. So select manual scan again, and then under your content directory, select MAME, and then do scan this directory. And under system directory, we're going to do MAME 2003 plus, because that's the ROM set I'm using. And then our default core, I'm just going to go to arcade MAME 2003 plus. Now here we want to select the arcade dat file. That's the one we downloaded earlier. So navigate to the settings folder, then retroarch folder, and then find that dat file. It's going to be labeled as final burn neo. And that's it, go ahead and hit start scan. This one will take a little bit longer, but it's still super fast. Okay, and there you can see we have all of these games. Now it doesn't convert the game name for every single file. For example, you see Arch Rival didn't make it through, but it's very easy to actually change the file name as well. Now let's remove all these parentheses as well. So we're gonna do that same process all over again. We're gonna go over settings, then playlists, then manage playlists. We're gonna grab the main one and then label display mode. And then we're gonna remove those parentheses and brackets. And there we are, we have nice clean file names now. So let's start up a game here and see how it looks. Okay, so here's 1944 and you can see it's not taking up the full screen, but I think now's a good time to show you how to make it full screen. So go back into settings, then video, and then scaling again. And then you're going to want to adjust these custom aspect ratios. For these two position values, just set them to zero. These values are actually based on the A12 device, which runs the same chipset. But the A13 has a bigger screen, so we can take advantage of the whole thing. So just turn both of these to zero, and then change the width and height to 1024 by 600. That's the resolution of the A13. And you can actually set this when you don't have any game loaded and then save your configuration file and that'll make it the default for every single game and every single core you open up unless you specify differently. And there you go, we're playing full screen MAME. So let's try it out and see how it plays. As you can see, it looks beautiful. And that's the thing I love about RetroArch, it's, it's totally customizable. So for example, if I want this game to be full screen, but I don't want another one to be full screen, or if I want to change the button mapping for specific games, I can do all that within the RetroArch menu. I'm not going to go over every single detail because we'd be here all day, but just know that this gives you a lot more options. So speaking of options, let's try out shaders. So here I'm playing Mario 3. I've already set the aspect ratio to 4x3, but now I'm going to enable the Scan 2x shader, which is one of my favorite shaders for NES games. So back out to the quick menu, and then go down to Shaders, and then turn them on and select Load Shader Preset. And then find the GLSL Shaders folder, and then go down to the Scale NX folder, and then you'll find the Scale 2x shader. And then once you select it, just resume the game, and you can see now we're using Scale 2x. I really like this because it smooths out all the pixels and it looks really nice on this 10 inch display. Now you can't use shaders on every system. So for example, with Super Nintendo, it tends to slow the game down, but it looks really good on the Nintendo. So here's a close up of scale 2X, just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Everything looks a little bit rounded and very smooth. Now if you don't like it, just go back to the quick menu, go into shaders and then turn the shaders off. And you can see this is what it looks like with the shaders off. Which also still looks very good. It's very pixely, but of course this is an 8-bit system and it's supposed to look like that. But again, talking about flexibility, this is a 4x3 aspect ratio here. And we're showing the original pixelation on a 10-inch screen. That's pretty cool. And here's the scale 2x again so you can see the difference. Okay, one more trick I want to show you is to add thumbnails. So you can see here, here's my full games directory here. I've added other systems and whatnot. And you can see here all my games listed. And they're all named in a certain way. And this is based on the no intro version of naming game files. Now, if you go into the settings and RetroArch folder, you'll find a thumbnails folder. 
And what you want to do in here is you want to create a folder for every one of the playlists you create within RetroArch. So if you remember with Nintendo, it said Nintendo-Nintendo Entertainment System. Within there, you want to create a folder called named underscore box arts. And in here, you're going to want to put image files that match the name of the game itself. You can see it has the same naming convention. Now you can do this automatically using a tool called Scraper. And I have lots of videos that show you how to do that. But you could also add them manually. It's really going to be up to you. I'll leave you a link to the Libretro GitHub page, which will allow you to search by system and then pull up thumbnails individually. And these are already named using the no intro naming convention. So if you get lucky, you may not have to rename anything at all. So same thing here, you just go into the named box art section and then pick your game. So I'm gonna do Batman the video game, which you can see here. And then there it is. Now if I go and I right click and save this image and I try to put it in that same thumbnails folder, you'll see that it's already named the exact same way, Batman the Video Game USA. So that's how you would do it if you want to do it one by one. Or check out one of my other videos to learn how to use Scraper. So one of the cool things about having a full version of RetroArch installed on your device is you can customize it to your needs. So you can see here I changed the format to look like the original RetroArch format. And here are all my thumbnails, they're loaded up perfectly. It's definitely an extra step to add all these thumbnails, but personally I really like seeing them. And honestly, I think this device shines with having a smaller library where you focus on only arcade titles and maybe other games that play really well with a joystick. And so because of that, adding thumbnails is not that big of a deal to me. I was able to manually add all of these in about an hour. Okay, one last trick I want to show you is that I found that I was having issues with my SD card. Sometimes my RetroArch configurations wouldn't save or my save states wouldn't save. And I think it has to do with using a FAT32 SD card. So the easiest way to fix this is just to plug your SD card into your Windows PC and you'll get prompted and it'll say there's a problem with this drive. So just click on that little thing that pops up and then hit repair drive. And it takes a few seconds, but just let it scan and repair your drive. I found that every single time this fixes the issue when it pops up. It's not the most elegant fix in the world, but it works. Okay, that's it for this video. I'm really in love with this Pow Kitty A13. Now that I've added my own buttons and joystick and weights to the bottom of it, and then installed my own firmware, it's just like the perfect little device for me. And my kids love this thing. And sure, the interface is not quite as simple as it used to be with the original firmware, but I like this one so much better. You just have a better ability to customize everything, and I really appreciate that. So be sure to check out the written guide linked below, which will have all the links that I discussed here in this video. And let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.